right? If I just gave you that, you could do it, but you'd have no way, you would not understand it. Uh, we did the limits of the sums so you would understand why you do this, how you do this. Now, we needed something else, though, because when we get to things like this, A Ramon sum doesn't work all that nice for that. <laughs> Gabriel will do an integral with that. So this is also an area. It's an area from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine x. That's your cosine curve. Now, the integral of cosine x, you've got to be able to get these right, otherwise your areas are going to be wrong. You'd show an area above the x-axis when it's below, or below when it's actually above. What is the integral of cosine x, please? Do you need to memorize that? Yes. Yep. And where are we going? Which one do we plug in first, the pi over 2 or the 0? Zero? Zero. Which one? The pi over 2. Otherwise, you'd have negative, which, by the, by the way, if you notice that, when your bounds are reversed, notice how you're subtracting off the wrong thing that would switch your sign of your area, right? That's why the whole the property I gave you where you can switch your bounds and it switches the sine of your integral, that's why that comes about. So here you'd have sine pi over 2 minus sine of 0. All right, come on now, people. I know you love some trig functions. Throw it at me. 1. Which one's 1? 1 minus 0 equals one. Your area is one. That's weird. Oh my gosh, have you thought of this, what this is? If you, do you understand what this is? Yeah. What's the picture? Yeah. Starts here, goes like that, here, there. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Hope so. That's a code. That's co cosine starts there. Cosine. 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 cosine goes to. Oh, I'll have to erase it to draw a better picture. Did you have questions on that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Watch the video. On what? <laughs> on what? You just found, yeah, don't draw these first, draw your curve first. Shoot, come on now. So teach you a master's degree. Yeah. Yeah, that's your area that you just found, that's equal to one. Isn't that very interesting? That's interesting. That really is interesting. Hmm. Which means the next section would be equal to negative one. Hopefully negative one. And then it'd be like positive, so on and so forth. Positive one, negative one, negative one, positive one. Okay. And then it'd be positive one, so it all Add it all up. Zero. Yes. Which means the area of a circle is zero. <laughs> did you catch that? <laughs> Wouldn't it be if you did an integral? Yeah. yeah, because you have the area above and the area below would match up. Because we're talking about net signed area right now. We haven't made it to total area, which is what we'll do in just a little while. Uh, we haven't made it there yet. Total area would change the area below the x-axis into something above the x-axis so you could actually add it together. We'll talk about that in, a, in just a bit. But right now we'll do a couple more examples just to really illustrate this stuff. And then we'll go... Until next class. Now we're always adding up to zero. Is that still true for also tangent? No. no. Tangent has undefined points. You can't go for it. Okay. If you think about tangent, yeah. tangent does this. Also one that would probably be kind of hard with uh, Ramon sum and those, those limits, okay? Not one that's great. However, can we do integrals with it? Sure, sure. You tell me what you do first. You can't split that. You can't Why can't you split that up? Multiplication. Ah, darn it. Um, I get rid of your square root into the actual one half. X to the one half. That'd be a good idea. Then I combine the two. 
I think then you can do your standard integration. Sure. Don't jump to something super hard right away. Don't jump to a substitution. I haven't showed you that for this yet, right? So that's off the table right now. Don't jump to that stuff. See if you can do it easily. Right? Make sure you, you maybe change a root or two. Substitutions often work when you have, well, trig functions is a good indication for that you should probably try. Or if you have parentheses, that's a really good indication you should probably try. And it won't distribute nicely. That's a very good indication you should probably try. So x to the 1 half, yeah, I'll bind to that. dx, I like that. And combine them. x to the how much if we combine those? You add, right? You add, so it's 5 halves. <laughs> x to the 5 halves, yes? Yeah. Can you take an integral of x to the 5 halves? Yeah. Very easily. This would be x to the 7 halves over, over 7 halves. Over the same exact variable. No, I'm sorry, exponent. Uh, exponent up top, exponent on the bottom. No problem. Make it a little bit prettier here. We're going to have 2x to the 7 halves over 7. And then we get to evaluate from 4 to 9. We plug in the 9 first. I've actually given you some nice numbers. Do you know how to do 7 halves uh, without a calculator? Or to make it quicker on a calculator? This is power over root, right? Oh, geez, I hope so. Do you remember that? Power over root? So you can take either one, whatever you want first. I would take a square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3 to the 7. That's what you plug in in your calculator. I, don't, I can't do that in my head. That's a pretty big number. 3 to the 7 is huge. So this is 2 times. Someone tell me what 9 to the 7 halves is or 3 to the 7. How much? Minus. This is the square root of 4 is 2. Then you do 2 to the 7th. Here's 2 to the 7th. Are you okay on getting those numbers out, ladies and gentlemen? 2 times 2187 uh, 2, is what? This should be 256. Someone give me, since we already have a common denominator, someone give me 4,374 minus 256, please. 4118. Does that simplify at all? That's, that's not visible by 7? Then you'll leave it. You could do a decimal if you really wanted to. Uh, let's make sure before we end this that our math is correct. Can I get a double check on 2187? Yeah. You got that as well? That's, yeah. Can I get a double check on the 128? Yeah. Same thing here. Same thing here as well? Mm -hmm. All right. How many people have what we talked about so far? Awesome. We'll try a couple more examples. We're almost done with our definite integrals. All right. Well, what do you say we continue some examples? Here up here we got the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of secant squared x dx. Now, we don't have any substitution for definite integrals yet. I'm going to show you something about that in a little bit. So right now, everything basically has to fit our integration table. What we learned last time was that when we do an integral like this, a definite integral, we found out firstly how to do it, and secondly, that's exactly like finding the area with the Riemann sum, or the sum of those partitions, which is very nice, very, very nice. So let's go ahead and let's take the integral of secant squared x dx. Do you all remember the integral of secant squared x dx? Tangent. Tangent squared or just tangent? Good. So here's how you write that. You'd say, okay, I know this is tan x. Uh, plus c or not? If it has bounds, no, because you're going to find an actual area. Because what you're going to do right now is you're going to be subtracting uh, f of b minus f of a. And if those did include c, it would be the same c. They would drop out of your equation anyway. So no, we don't have a plus c on this. What you do do is you have this first, and then you throw up. You don't throw up. 
Sorry, that's, that's it when you get home for your homework. You put up the, uh, the integration, or sorry, the, the evaluation symbol. You go, okay, I'm evaluating from zero to pi over three. So therefore, you show me what the integral is, you show me your bounds of integration, your bounds of evaluation, and then you plug them in. Which one do you plug in first, the zero or the pi over three? Okay, so what this says is tangent of pi over three minus tangent of zero. That's well, not too painful. How much is tan pi over three? Don't leave me hanging. Awesome. <laughs> One point seven three, like my calculator says. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Learn a unit circle. Root three. Root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, reciprocate, multiply, you get root 3. That's because it's sine over cosine. Ah, ah, you need to know that. Okay, anyway, uh, so we have our, our integral, the area underneath the curve of secant squared between 0 and pi over 3 is, ah, we got it, square root of 3. It's interesting, right? It's kind of weird that we're able to find those areas so nice and neatly. Are you ready to try a couple more of these things? Yes, no? Yes. Did that make sense to you? Besides the square root of 3, which you all just kind of screwed up right now? All right. Hey, you're the one who screwed up. <laughs> okay, explain to me something about this problem. You have to invert it and change it to negative integer or whatever. Okay, very good. Explain why. What's wrong with this problem? It's backwards, the bounds are backwards. It is. It should go from smaller to larger bounds. In fact, you know what, if you did it like this, if you did, you would get, I believe you get the right answer actually, if you try it right now, you'll get the right answer, but that proves the statement that we had before, that this is going to be negative. So for instance, if you did this, you'd get x to the fourth over four, right? No plus c, but if you evaluated from four to zero like it says, you'd have zero to the fourth over four, minus 4 to the 4th over 4. And what that would end up being is negative 4 to the 4th over 4. So 4 cubed, negative 64. So, so if I've done my math correct, did I do my math correct? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Now let's check to see if we get the right answer the other way as well. We also knew from a property that if I reverse this and go 0 to 4, that becomes a negative. Well, let's see. That would be negative x to the 4th over 4. That would be negative. You need brackets there because you're going to have a uh, sign in the middle of that. And that's evaluated from 0 to 4. 4 to the 4th over 4 minus 0 to the 4th over 4. And that would give you negative 64. Here's 64. Which by example kind of proves that that was true, that I can reverse my bounds and that makes, makes me change my sign. So just by an example, we see that that is true. But notice how you do actually get the same exact answer either way. That's because it is true. It has to be. What it represents, though, is kind of awkward. Because this looks like it's an area above the x-axis, when in fact it's not. Uh, this is just read wrongly, incorrectly. So the correct way to do this problem would be to write the bounds in the appropriate order with the negative out in front of it, and that would give you negative 64. Either way, but this is, this is kind of showing you, okay, this is an area underneath the x-axis, not above it. How many will feel okay with, with that one? Yeah. 